uh, that the human body requires more than 42 different nutrients. And all these are essential, and not four or six nutrients. The best manufacturers of these nutrients are plants, and not Roche. Plants extract nutrients from the soil to make the grains, the vegetables, the roots, the tubers, which we consume as food. So agriculture is very important here. And I would like to follow on what uh, Madam uh, Roda has been saying about the initiatives for agriculture. We have so many of those. Now we have cut up. But we need to realize that for many farmers, family labor still represents the main or only asset for agriculture productivity. So quality of the ag agricultural labor force is an important component for agricultural production. And this has often been neglected in development planning process and nutrition uh, interventions. For example, there's never been uh, Very few of these initiatives have focused on or included aspects related to improving human labor productivity, of which the most important components include health and nutritional status of producers. So the quality of agricultural labor force is often suboptimal, especially at the time when they are required to provide much of the power needed for agricultural production. And this is the time when malaria prevalence is high, food insecurity is rampant, and malnutrition is high. So we cannot expect these people to really produce and produce enough for themselves and for the market. So there's a need to include actions that will address the quality of agricultural labor force. Again, we have initiatives that have been implemented, like biofortification through crop nutrient improvement, for example, high quality maize, high quality potato, and all those kind of things. But these approaches have often been top down externally supported, not demanded. In addition, the breeding that is going on, increasing the nutrient content, one of the nutrients, we don't know how that, you know, tilt the balance of nutri nutrients in the, in, the, in the crop and how that affects the nutrient utilization by the body. This has not been established. I hope the, the initiatives that are doing this would come up with an answer. But do we really want our people to continue eating maize or orange fleshed sweet potatoes? Or, and this defeats the whole purpose of biodiversity, dietary diversity, and agriculture biodiversity in solving nutrition problems in Africa. So there's always an assumption that uh, if the food is produced, then it will be consumed. In most cases, that is not the case. People produce, but do not eat. And in Africa, eating is not enjoyed, which is something that has to change. So our people actually need information on how best they can combine the foods that they produce to maximize nutrient availability and nutri uh, utilization for their own nutritional status. Another issue that has been touched on by my colleagues here is about sectoral approach. Yes, we have blocks, we have silos. And these have been very difficult to break. I'm sure people who have been battling with getting other sectors into action can testify to this. But we need to remember that mm -hmm. at the community level, there are no sectors. There are livelihoods and life. And in fact, agriculture, nutrition, and health is a continuum. 
It's their way of life. They produce, they eat, and the outcomes are there. So I think we need to, 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 to change that we need to organize ourselves, reorganize these sectors so that they can have uh, a perspective whereby looking at the needs of the communities instead of their own uh, existence and survival. Another aspect was about agricultural planning, and I would like to echo what Rosanna just mentioned. Agricultural planning with a nutrition and health lens. The goal of agricultural production should be to produce food for health and nutrition. Planning for food production should be used on the nutrient, should actually be based on the nutrient requirement of the population. Nutrient based uh, planning so that we know, for example, how much of the, of the vitamins are required for the entire population, which crops are best suited to provide those vitamins, and how can they be produced, how much should be produced, so that at the end we know exactly that we have requirement for so much of the nutrients, and these are the crops that can be uh, able to provide uh, that. In most cases, our planning has been based on cereals or energy, less on vegetables, less on fruits, even the statistics Agricultural production statistics for vegetables and fruits are non-existent in our agricultural production statistics. So we need to incorporate that to factor in micronutrient aspects in the agricultural planning. And indicators for agricultural performance should include assessment of health and nutrition attainment. In, uh, and in this regard, I think nutrition economics will be very relevant here. The measures of yield per hectare should be translated in terms of nutrition and health. How much nutrition is or will be derived from a one hectare yield of a given crop? Or how much health is or will be attained by a one hectare yield of a given crop? I think uh, uh, I would like to echo what the uh, AVDRC are doing, they showed us a statistics about a, a six by six plot and how much uh, iron or vitamin A is actually produced from that plot. So I think that should be the way to go, planning with agriculture and planning agriculture with nutri nutrition and health. Uh, another aspect that I need to, to touch on here is about training. Training has been in compartments, no linkages at all. I think we need to, to come up with flexible programs, programs that can allow people to cross inter, multi, whatever way we, we could do that so that they can be able to be at least versatile and comprehensive in their, in their, in, in their training. And for those who are already in the field, working out there, I think we can assist them to have a seminar or training on agri-nutri health. So that's another cause which should come up, agri-nutri health, so that we have agriculture, nutrition, and health there. Research, I think this has been mentioned. In Africa, Nutrition, agriculture, and health problems are huge and require multiple ways of solving them. And this calls for holistic and integrated approach to research. Interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, those agenda and protocols I think are needed. And these are necessary in order to, actually in addition to the science that we get from research, we also need to capture the social and anthropological issues of agriculture, health, and nutrition in communities and households. So the approach should be demand-driven. Research should be demand-driven, participatory, and action-oriented from the community level. In addition, we need information. We need information. Farmers would need information, perhaps, on when they go in production. 
what are the kind of foods that they need to produce so that they can meet, first of all, their own nutritional needs and perhaps other crops for, for market. So that's also an area that is needed. Another area which I think is important is about gender, and this has mentioned over and over again. But uh, we need to change our approach on how we approach this gender issue. Because the focus has been on women, but women don't live alone. Women live with husbands, with children, with grand, you know, all those people around them. So the focus on, on, on women, I, I think, has delayed us on achieving some of these millennial development goals. Because these are, are, are vulnerable, and if you want to go to a battle, you don't pick the vulnerables, you pick the strongest and the vulnerable, the vulnerable together so that you can have an impact. And I'm saying this because we have seen now and again that if you target a household or household members, you have more impact than targeting only women. Because women, as we know in Africa, they are not decision makers. And one man one day remarked that, you know, all these years we've been talking about child nutrition, maternal nutrition, nutrition education, and in fact you have been targeting the wrong people. You should, be, you, should, you should have been talking to us because we are the decision makers. And we have noted in, our, in the projects that we've been doing that in fact men respond faster to our messages than women. So strengthening agriculture, I think we need to, to really, uh, these three sectors are very important. Agriculture, nutrition, and health are important. But uh, these also need uh, the public, private, and commercial people there who would have to be linked and coordinated to enable this agenda to really move forward. How, however, the most crucial partners are the communities. This is where action ought to take place. Therefore, involvement of communities or villages to ensure greater participation and outcome is critical. Nevertheless, it should be noted that nutrition, health, and agriculture challenges are not the same in all communities. Differences do exist both within a community and from one population group to another. Therefore, we need to contextualize nutrition, agriculture, and health issues as well as identification, prioritization of the issues to meet the specific needs of each location. And this would be necessary to act eventually mainstream nutrition in community or village agriculture and health development plans. Thank you very much.